To say you gotta know somebody or know somebody to get somewhere these days. To say you know that's alright, yeah that's alright. Cause you know that's all alright with me. Yeah, you know that's alright, yeah that's alright. So uh, without further ado, my business partner Jeremy is gonna take over. He's gonna do an introduction of our speakers tonight. So let's get started. Alright, so we have the, the privilege of having a tag team here. Uh, I've known Mitch Ripkin for a long time. Mitch uh, hobbled in here all the way on his crutches from uh, Abington, are you now? Actually, South Philly. South, oh, you, you left South Philly. <coughs> Mitch is uh, full-time in the business for 17 years. Part -time, when he was doing real estate part-time, he was a gym teacher. So uh, before, before he started, uh, you know, Playing on the real estate courts, he was on the basketball courts and the tennis courts and other courts like that. Um, he's done a lot of deals. He's been a mentor of mine for a while. He's uh, done. We've done some money deals together, and uh, Mitch, Mitch has uh, really introduced me to some smart characters. Speaking of characters, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mark, ba Mark Banks over here. Uh, he's he and Mitch have <coughs> joint partnerships in their private lending, and uh, Mark has been. A real estate lawyer for 60 years, and in, and lend, doing private lending for 55 years since I was eight. Since you're eight years old, <laughs> so they have they literally have a combined 100 years of experience in real estate. So uh, I invite them to come here to talk a little bit about the, the private lending. It's interesting how many private lenders they actually. Uh, brought here to do that but you know what I find here. interesting is why did they all sit on that side of the room <laughs> must be something I moved you're, you're I was over there <laughs> <laughs> we gotta balance out the oh, ship yeah. a little bit <laughs> so um, yeah I, I guess uh, what we'd like to do is just have a Bart and and Mitch talk a little bit about how they got started and what they'd like to talk about as far as real estate goes and also what they do in their lending business and how it might be able to help you rent <coughs> rent up your business we have a Mike, yeah, it's right on the end of the podium. Yeah, we can. Get some notes open up here. Yeah, sure. You take the stage first. Sure. Where's the stage? Yeah. All right, everybody, Bart Banks. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I, uh, I have to chuckle. It says our biggest private lender is looking for new clients be at this meeting. So they couldn't get him, so they got me. <laughs> <laughs> they always say, get what's his name? And, uh, it says, it goes on to say, he built a portfolio of over a thousand units. And I think during my lifetime, my dad, my uncle, my grandfather, and I built, we handled, bought, sold a thousand units. And I'll tell you how. They were in business 80 years ago. Uh, can everybody hear me? They bought hundreds of units, my grandfather, my dad, my uncle, and uh, I think the most they ever paid for a unit was maybe $2,000 in the city of Philadelphia. $1,500 is more like it. And uh, they kind of uh, originated the lease purchase agreement for residential real estate during the Second World War because there was rent control in Philadelphia for a good 10 years after the war ended, and you couldn't get rental increases. Okay. And uh, they built up a portfolio of a couple hundred, and then later he cashed them in, sold them all, went into the finance business. We had a savings and loan for about 30 years. And I was the president of that for a while. And uh, I sort of cut my teeth in the real estate industry. And the reason that I say I know we had a thousand is because they had three or four hundred. And I've been in 60 years, 55 years I've been a lender. And 
and I know I take back about six a year. <laughs> in my 360, in their 600, we made almost a thousand. Everybody know what hard money lending is? Yeah. Hard money lending is hard to collect. Easy to put out, but hard to collect. And that's when I know we have a couple of private lenders here, and they'll verify that. By the way, I didn't bring a whole lot of cards, so write this down if you're writing. My phone number is 610-940-3900. And Mitch's is 215-740-0200. If it's dinner time or thereafter, call Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> the phone's off. Uh, we do lend now. Uh, I have recently, by the way, like Phil, Phil, I know Phil since 1989, and uh, I know he's written a book, and I've recently completed my book, which is called How to Make Real Money in Real Estate. And it's my contention that everything you need to know about real estate begins with the letter C. Cash begins with the letter C. And everything else that's involved in making money in real estate begins with that letter. And I have in this book 160 different words that begin with the letter C that have to do with making money in real estate. And if you call my office, you would be the lucky ones to get a copy free of mine. I'd be happy to send you one because they're now at the printer and I can't talk them to you tonight. <laughs> um, let's consider something. Everybody I finance needs good credit. Don't call me up and tell me you got a 570 score, but there's a reason for it and you're going to be better. Because frankly, if you don't pay your bills, I'm not really interested. Uh, you need a property that, that's going to have cash flow, either by virtue of its sale, or you're going to rent it, and the expenses and carrying charges are going to be less than what you're taking in. So you're going to need to make some cash to pay you back. You're going to have to put up collateral. We do not do unsecured deals. Now, it can be any number of things. It can be the deal you're working on, it can be something you already own. It can be a combination of it. It can be somebody else's collab. We can tailor make all kinds of loans if you come in and talk to us. We're very creative. Being creative begins with the city. And everything I'm telling you begins with the city. Observe. You need good character. Uh, I don't want to hear that you really make a lot of money but you don't pay taxes because you get paid on the table. I just don't want to hear. If you don't pay my Uncle Sam, you're not going to pay me. That's the way I feel. I don't want to hear that you beat me. You don't want to show money because you're getting a divorce and you don't want the wife to get it. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear a lot of sob stories. I want you to have cash flow and have character. I want to talk for a minute about the, the corporate approach. There are companies out there. And by the way, I know Phil, as I said, since 1989 in Germany. And I guess it must be at least 10 years. And, uh, not quite. Not quite? Close. Okay. Uh, these are the mentors that I will vouch for. I do not vouch for every mentor. Be very careful who you select as a mentor. Uh, there are those companies that will tell you to take the corporate approach. Uh, you know, I know that I'm also an attorney. We have sued several of them. Uh, they'll, they'll set you up with an office and a desk and a secretary and an advertising program and they'll take their 6% off the top and they have to buy leads that they're going to supply it. And it's a whole uh, involved business they call you a franchise. And more of those people who have bought those things that I know have not made money and will be a hell of a lot better off operating off the table in their kitchen 
with their cell phone and keeping their overhead down and finding their own deals. So I'm, I'm not in favor. There are good seas and bad seas. The bad sea, in my opinion, is the corporate approach. Uh, the other thing you're going to find is, I'm sure that a lot of you have been told you've taken courses and read books. I tell you to form an LLC, form a corporation, that way you're going to avoid personal liability. You go into my office or any bank, the first thing they ask you is, are you going to sign? Because if you're not going to sign, and you're not going to know, you're not getting my money. Right. Personal yeah. it's, uh, it's real simple. I've worked for many, many years, been very fortunate, made at least a couple hundred thousand bucks a year, put kids through school, braces, camp, paid all my bills, Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a year. At the end of five, eight, ten years, you accumulate a hundred thousand dollars. If you think you're going to come in and borrow a hundred thousand dollars from me after I worked that hard and paid all my taxes and saved this money and not sign for it and, and have your wife say to me, "Well, I'm not going to sign. It's not going to work." And very few lenders that I know who are still in business will allow you to do that. So spare yourself the extra set of books that a corporation require, the extra tax returns, the extra taxes, the accountants for you. Spare yourself. Uh, if you want to form an LLC, fine. You understand something. Be a co-signer for anything you do. Go on the book. Uh, Talk a minute about the callousness. I know some people specialize in, in sheriff sales. And I'll tell you, when you're new in the business, sheriff sales are a good place to pick up properties. Um, divorces, people split up, go after the property. Death in the family, search the records of the registered wills. And real financing under certain circumstances, but in my opinion, be careful of being a little too callous because it backs up on you. And a sheriff's sale, I remember the first sheriff's sale I ever went to with my dad. Somebody waved to him across the room. And my dad waved back. And we bid on the property. And after the sheriff's hammer fell and we got the property, this guy who didn't know my dad came over and he said, where's my 500? And my father said, what are you talking about? He said, I said 500 for not bidding. And you went, OK. <laughs> Be careful at sheriff's office. You've got to know what you're doing down there. It's not for amateurs. They call the guys and you'll see the same faces there all the time. It's Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. <laughs> they know what they're doing. And, uh, Literally when they call. Oh, yeah. oh sure. It's the guys. And uh, it's a science. And you got to understand liens. And uh, I had one client, don't forget, he said to me, you know, I bought a piece of sheriff's sale. I did a, a, a drive by when he was inspecting, I never got inside. And I didn't know it, but the day I drove by, the guy that was living there was out of town. And after the sheriff's sale, I thought the house was not occupied. I went to put a new lock on the door, and there he was. I had to get a lawyer. So we got a lawyer, and he paid the lawyer, and they started the eviction proceedings. Well, came the day of the eviction, the guy went into bankruptcy. Stopped the eviction. Three months goes by. We're down to bankruptcy court with your lawyer who's now getting $300 an hour. And he files petitions and motions and he gets a decree that you're supposed to get the house. So at the end of another month or so, the sheriff pulls up only to find out that the wife went to the bankruptcy. That stops it. Three more months, they both went into bankruptcy, husband and wife. Two years it took to get that property back because the people knew how to work the system. And when they got it, of course, there were no pipes, no electric, holes in the wall, 
cat urine all over it. If you're buying in charges, the rule of thumb is if you're buying to rehab and flip for rent, you better be buying somewhere around 50% of the dollar of the comps in the neighborhood. But if you're buying a sheriff sales, I'm going to tell you something, buy at 25 cents on the dollar. Because about every fourth or fifth deal that you buy is going to be trouble. And I said to my client, you're very lucky. And he said, I said, what do you mean I'm very lucky? It took me tens of thousands of dollars in two years to get the property. I said, because I have another client who had the very same experience with you. And when he got there, finally, with the sheriff, the day of reckoning came, it was going to his property. There was the occupant with a shotgun. Oh, mm -hmm. nice side. You were lucky. It's a, it, it's a sophisticated game, and don't start there if you want to buy. Be civil. Don't make, I don't like to make money off of somebody else's grief. If somebody's getting divorced, I want to stay out of it. If somebody had a death in the family, I don't want my postcards to get there. We buy houses. I just don't. And by the way, and again, counsel will bear me out on this. In the orphans court, they have a rule. You can sign an agreement of sale, and you, the buyer of the house. And if another offer comes in before that settlement is made, the orphans court says, "Sorry, we have to take the highest and best bid. There is no such thing as a final sale for an estate until it's final." until the court says it's fine. And you will have lots of people hawking those properties that really have no right to sell them. A lot of wholesalers uh, try to sell that stuff without court approval. The entire <coughs> code Coaches, consultants, courses. Uh, The coaches I know, most of them, are excellent at selling courses. <laughs> I don't know how much real estate they buy, or own, or rent, but they sure can sell courses. Uh, Donald Trump has got his own course out there. Uh, I don't know how many times he's walked into his banker and said to him, listen, Charlie, uh, here's the keys. <coughs> You're going to run the casino now. And, and the banker said, well, wait a minute. What do we know about running a casino? We'll give you 100000 a month. Just stay on and make sure everything works. And it was good because that's exactly what Ivana needed was 100000 a month. <laughs>